All right, so we're back. Um, yeah, I got the video all cropped. Everything was well. I'm just in position now. Do a little dungeoneering. So, uh, as I said before, I'm probably not going to uh, go very far. I mean, it's once you get a good groove going in Dungeons of Dreadmore, it's uh, a fairly simple ride until you get mobbed or something. So, I'm probably going to do well, probably a couple more. LPs like this, and then I'll just let it alone until maybe until I reach dungeon level 3, and then I'll do a little bit more recording. I'm gonna wait for my. There we go. Use the spores here. Uh, I guess what you missed from the part that I had to crop out it was a uh, returning back to shop. I was commenting a lot on the uh, the flavor of Dungeons and Dreadmore and how I quite like it. It's like most roguelikes. Hmm. Fancy leather armor. It is pretty fancy and it doesn't drop my magic. I'll think about it. But like most roguelikes, it's uh, it's very light-hearted. It doesn't try to take itself too seriously. And you can see that in a lot of things, like, uh, like the Ludfisk. Ludfisk for the Ludfisk God, as, as we'll probably find in a little bit. It's, it's got a lot of neat little things. I hope I can point some out. Uh, I should really stop wasting my power just on that. I'm, I'm down to three mana. Oh well, drink some grog. Down the hatch. Here we are. Spore it up. Yeah, micromanaging those spores. It's not easy, man. So, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes those, uh. I don't know if those do anything. I mean, they might trigger something deep in the dungeon, but who, who could know? Who could know for sure? Ha ha ha. That's what you get for attacking me. Um. Nah. Pop some spores on him. I'm getting some pretty good fungi. I'm thinking. My, yeah, my next skill points are probably going to be popped into, uh, into archaeology since it seems to be working out for us. Oh, and here we go. I, uh, get to display a little game secret. For, uh, a lot of these recipes, for ones that you don't have, it usually won't let you make it until you find it. But either this is a glitch or something, it will let you make this recipe a deep omelet, which uh, is one of the best food items in the game. That's 60 turns of regeneration, which is just incredible. You just eat one of those if you find a monster farm and you're, you're good until you've killed everything, basically. And you just keep popping, keep finding those diggle nests, so you never really run out of uh, diggle eggs. So that's nice, and just keeps you going for the rest of the game. I mean, that fairy, fairy watcher. Is really going to be helpful, but I mean, you need you do need to eat food sometimes. 
I was thinking of also getting vampirism, because I've heard a lot of good things about that. It's uh, a fairly useful ability. Have, have vampirism, you heal by... Ah, not you. Go away. Vampirism lets you heal using the uh, corpses of enemies. And it's also compatible with fungi, from what I've heard. <laughs> that little sound effect that makes. So you don't need a lot of loot fisk to get a, I guess prizes from the Ludfisk god, as as I hope I'll be able to demonstrate, but uh, it's good to just turn items that you're not using anyway. Just because they're, like, bolts sell for next to nothing, and uh, even though the, the gifts from Ludfisk god are basically gobshite. They are artifacts, so you can, uh... Whoa. Robo Bolt Trigger. I didn't think I'd find one of those in level 1. The artifacts you get from Ludfisk God are gobshite, but at least you can, uh, use that archaeologist ability to uh, get experience from that. Very useful. All right, I had a little interruption there. So, and I found another shop, which is pretty good. Is there anything in here worth buying? Doesn't look like it. This is kind of funny. Uh, it, this is a uh, a nail board brand nail board. Ooh, and that's the uh, Mark II prototype. <laughs> So that's a little bit of the humor I was talking about. Um, Corpid the badly dressed ales. Hmm, that's not bad. I might buy that because it's really cheap. It's a ring that, you know, does something as opposed to this ring I have already, which I guess gives me resistance to electricity, but meh. And once I find a better ring, I can just archaeologist that one away. So I think I'll do that. But first, let's sell this crap. Uh, sell those. Hmm. Bad. I'm wondering if I should... Yeah. Selling my traps. I might regret it, but I probably won't. So there I go. So what does that actually give me? It gives me one savvy. Um, magical haywire chances and sneakiness. That's good. And one uh, melee power. So I do just a little bit more damage. I'm really hoping to get a good artifact staff of some sort. That would be... That would be very nice. Guess what, Diggle? Today... Not your lucky day. Grind, grind, grind. Yay. I like to use these greedy bungle caps a lot. They're, uh, they're very good for just surviving in battle. Ooh. Patch of dirt. Let's make some more mushrooms. And some more lockpicks. Yeah, I'm getting up there with for my lockpick count. Oh my gosh. Uh, looks like I'm going to be using some fire. And they're all dead now. Sweet. Probably won't be able to utilize... Oh man. Utilize many of their corpses, but you know, some. 
and I really should be using <coughs> some of my good uh, good fungi here and there. I'm, I'm, I'm saving them up for a rainy day. A time will come where I will use them. Cracked orb. It's the same as the one I have. I guess they're like the mage shield option. Which I'm alright by. And this is a room we had teleported to before. And it was just crammed with all types of neat stuff, so I'll probably be picking up a lot of it. This is a critical hit. Uh, yay, fungi again. Yes, fairy watcher. That's what I want. Let's get some lock picks all up in here. Ooh. I I don't like to get, I don't know, zapped by things. It's good to not disarm traps until you until you can. Not only will they damage you, but some of them will get used up by being activated. And that's, uh, again, experience that you don't get. Ooh, a dire sandwich. You... I don't use a lot of items. I'm a pretty low-maintenance, you know, self-sufficient kind of guy. Just how I roll, but there's no uh, no end to items to be found and to be used, and there's a lot of tinkering that you can do. But I've just never tinkering. I mean, the mushrooms take up a lot of space. Oh no, traps have been activated. That's good for me. Ooh, another level should be happening kind of soon. Alright. But, yeah, tinkering just... <clears throat> the stuff you get from it just didn't seem very worthwhile. We can take a look at the tinkering recipe book. I'll just look briefly at it. So that's the tinkering stuff. Um, you get some pretty neat crossbows at higher levels. <clears throat> you could probably unlock uh, level 5 crossbows, which are pretty good. <clears throat> and it's the only way to make ammo for yourself. There's another really good option. But most of it's like traps, bombs, flasks of stuff. I mean, there may be a time where I'll use traps, but seems like just duking it out with your fists and with magic is the way to go. So I'm running up on time here. Ooh, a ring. Hmm. You know what? I'm not going to use this ring of ash. I'm going to get fire resistance anyway through that, uh, Promethean magic. So I'm, I'm just going to, uh, just going to sell that guy. Man. Oh, so close to that level. But I'm going to halt this recording and just get started on another one real soon. <laughs>